speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, uh, so last week we talked about strong cigars and strong whiskeys. We had the <laughs> Diesel Rage and we had the Wild Turkey Rare Breed coming in at 116%. Bam! Uh, this week we're going to go with a different route. Uh, we're going to go with the Centurion H2K CT, Connecticut. Um, it is still a pretty, uh, you know, full flavored cigar. We talked about the difference between flavor, strength, and body. Uh, but plenty of flavor in this one. It's a little bit lighter of a smoke than what you're going to get from the diesel. And we're going to pair it this week, not with something straight, but with one of my favorite drinks is the Old Fashioned. And I'm going to be using the Monkey Shoulder. And, um, and I'm also going to stray away and I'm going to use orange bitters and an orange. Um, a lot of times with old fashions, you want to use rye whiskeys, but I just love the monkey shoulder. I think it's just does great for the old fashioned and it's also my video. So I'm going to do what I want to. So how about that? So, uh, we are going to start obviously by, ah, the Centurion, uh, my father's, um, uh, hmm. We're having technical difficulties here because, pause. All right, sorry, we're having technical difficulties here. All right, um, so today we are smoking the Centurion H2K CT. It's a Connecticut wrapper. Um, it's actually, what's interesting about this is it's a hybrid of a sun-grown Habana wrapper uh, that's grown in the Connecticut River Valley. And I know that I talked about this in my very first video that I did. Um, if some of y'all remember this, this is the one that I did live, so there's no more recording of it. Thank God, because that was terrible. But that's all right. And I'm going to dip in again about the difference between the Maduro, the Connecticut, um, the Habano, uh, the Cameroon, um, and all the different kinds, and a little bit more so I can y'all understand what I'm saying when I say it's a Habano, this or that. Um, now, the Centaurian is made by my father, so, um... Your father makes cigars? No. Um, so, Centaurian, <laughs> Centaurian is made by my father's cigars, which it was started by, uh, Jose, uh, Garcia? Garcia? Yeah. The son of Don Pepin, and if y'all don't know, Don Pepin is like the godfather of cigars. He's one of the greatest, one of the best, as well as his son. Uh, they just do great works. Um, the reason I'm not going to go into the history too much, as I normally would, is because I know that I'm going to do another video with my father's cigars. They make plenty of good lines, uh, plenty of good smokes, and I know I'm going to have one that I want to talk more about it. Um, this video really and honestly is going to more focus on the monkey shoulder and the old-fashioned name. But, that being said, we're still going to dip into this bad boy. Remove the ribbon. And, you know, some people like to wait to remove their bands. Um, I know with the amount of whiskey that I drink, it becomes harder by the time that it's done. So I go ahead and get those done. Um, and sometimes, i got to activate this light real quick, guys. Uh, I like to save a lot of my bands if they're worth saving that way that I know. And I'll throw them in my humidor. Um, it's funny, though, because I have gotten yelled at, not yelled at, but uh, typed in at all caps and some of my cigar pages because a lot of times people can be prudes and they don't like my dirty humidor. Well, guess what? It's my humidor. So, suck it. Anyways, we're going to obviously start as we always do. Make sure that you find your cap on the cigar. And let's get this right under here. Um... I don't know if you can you see that in the video. Well, you can't see that at all. all right. Well, on every cigar you have a cap, which is at the top of your cigar, and there's a clear line, which you can see on called the shoulder right there. And if you look closely, you can see the cap of the cigar at any point in time, and that's your cutting point. Uh, so take a cutter, uh, line that thing up, and snip. God dang! Look at that. All right. Cool. Perfect. Uh, get your lighter. Let's hold. Woo! Lord. That thing got set up a little bit, huh? There we go. Alright, as always, you know, you never want to get, you never want 
torch your cigar like that. You don't want to do that. Burns it, no good. I mean, it's not really... If you're just starting, you're not going to tell the difference. I can't tell the difference. I just know it's not. you're not supposed to do that. You want to use the heat from that light. Uh, you don't want to put it directly on there. Uh, with a single torch, I like lighting because you can get a whole roast around it. Um, obviously, your quads and your tries are a little bit quicker. Uh, these are great for controlling any kind of runs or whatnot. So you want to rotate on the outside of your cigar. Blow out your excess smoke. So right off the bat, I'm going to tell you guys, uh, like I said, this is a like flavored cigar. Like you, There's a lot of flavor in this thing. It's not as strong as the diesel last week. I'm not taking a hit of this, and I'm not like, whoo, mama, you know. This has got plenty of uh, flavor into it. Um, what is interesting, though, about this is it's actually got kind of a kind of sweet sort of taste to it. Um, when I say sweet, I'm not talking about like I just ate some candy, but the, uh, the smoke in your mouth... Uh, has kind of like a uh, almost honey yeah I'd say closer to like a honey kind of aftertaste to it which is pretty cool um, and I knew that this was a more mellow creamier cigar and that's why I wanted to pair it with the old-fashioned and uh, the monkey shoulder even the monkey shoulder straight would be pretty nice with this because monkey shoulder in itself is a little bit sweeter um, And, uh, honestly, this is actually, no, I had the GT, or the, uh, Flathead, that was actually one that I'd never had before. I guess this is the second cigar that I've done that I've never tried before. So, this is kind of cool. Um, and, you know, like I said, I, I think I touched this once again on the first video. Um, to get the full effect of any cigar that you want to do, you gotta do your retro hail. hail. Um, if you're not familiar with what that is, uh, it's just puffing on the cigar. And you want to blow most of it out of your mouth, but you want to get the last good bit through your nose. Because you get a lot of the taste and everything through your nose. If you just blow through your mouth. And to be honest, that's hard for me just to do blow out of my mouth now. Just because I've been trained myself to do that. Um, you'll get a little bit of the taste and whatnot, and it's... I guess at that point, if that's all you're doing, it's just a habit. Um, but if you really want to get the full effect, go and get your retro hail on. And I hope you can see that. I got a big enough nose where enough smoke should have been visible to come out. Um, when you do that, you get more of the flavor. You really get the full experience of the cigar. And I'm actually pretty excited about this thing because, um, as I talked about in previous videos, each cigar is pretty much divided into thirds when they come talking about taste because the profile will change over the course um, to that heat and the burning and the smoke all coming through. So I'm really excited to see how this thing turns out. Um, I'm going to smoke a little bit more of this, and then we are going to start, and I'm going to show you how to make my old-fashioned. I'm going to tell you all the proper way, and I'm going to teach you how to make it my way, which obviously involves more alcohol. So I'll be back with you all shortly, um, and stick around. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm uh, back a little bit early. Um, I'm just going to do a short little show you guys something what's good about having the uh, single torch lighter um so you can see right here in the cigar all this good 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 uh oh spaghetti yo um and you got a nice little run in the cigar easy way to fix this right here is just take that torch and kind of once again you don't want to touch it just kind of toast it and kind of toast off that area and even it out um once again the single torch Torches are great for that. Um, once you get into the quads and the uh, triples and all that stuff, it's a little bit harder, but you can still manage that. Um, I just wanted to touch base on that with y'all real quick. I'm going to smoke a little bit more of this, and then we're going to get into the old fashions. So, Alright, guys. So, I've smoked a decent little bit of this so far, and, you know, it's, like I said, normally, um, like I said, I like the darker cigars and this is not one this is a mellow cigar fantastic especially if you're first starting out 
Um, and it's still got that kind of sweet taste to it. It's got a kind of a... Like a oaky, not oak, cedary kind of smell, taste to it also. But it's keeping that sweet consistency. And it's also bringing just a little bit of some kind of like little spice in the back that you'll notice. But, um, so we are going to go on and... I'm going to show you how I make my old fashions. Now, old fashions are generally uh, with bitters, sugar, um, whiskey. It's generally a rye and a single cube, stirred and mixed, and uh, you top it off with a splash of soda. Um, and usually they just do like a little pour. Me, however, being me, I was going to do this a little different. Um, got your... sugar cubes here. You should use about four or five or so. Uh, put them all in your glass. Uh, I got the orange bitters just because I thought, you know, I did a little bit of research about this cigar and I saw that it was going to be a little bit on the sweeter side. Um, so I figured that the orange would go good with that. So let's not too much. Get that going right there. Crush everything up. Be careful, kids. It's sharp. Uh, I want to thank uh, Matt Estes. I'm not sure if he's going to be watching this video, but he gave me this knife. It's got plenty of use. It was actually a gift my first year going out to Wyoming. Um, somehow I still have this thing, so thanks, bud. Um, Alright, so now you got your sugar and bitters mix and to be quite honest I probably shouldn't have used five but that's okay it's my video I do what I want uh, now we're gonna add um, now usually you just add one piece of big ice but I got my weird way of doing it add a couple Get a little stirring going on. Stir, son of a mother's lover. Right. A nice little stir in there. I like to add two more after this, and add just a little bit more whiskey. And there, cork. Boop. Right there. Let's get that good little stir going again. Make sure mom and dad's around when you do this. You don't want to hurt yourself. And the good thing about this table is not only do I get the orange, I also get nice little wood shavings on this too. Delicious. It'll pair nicely with the cigar. Um, so this is where I vary and where the traditional is. Uh, I... Well, you're not supposed to. Get out of there. Not supposed to rip that peel apart like I did. But I will squeeze this in. And sometimes I use cherry bitters and you put like a cherry in there. And some people muddle the cherry, some people muddle the orange. I don't do that. I just put this thing in here. Slash. But once again, this is my version. This is not the proper way. Tear that rind apart right there. I'm gonna get this little thing all across because the bitterness kind of counters with everything else that you get on there. Throw that son of a gun in there. And that's how you made the old fashioned by Jamie Harold right here. So let's try this out. Oh, why don't we? Uh oh. I don't want it in my mouth. That's what she said. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, all right. Let's see how well this pairs with this. So, take our hit. Again, so it's got that kind of sweetness, a little bit of peppery, 
nests in there in the background, and by God, I'm a genius. Boom, baby. All right, I'm going to smoke a little bit. Uh, you know what? Actually, why don't we talk a little bit about the old-fashioned and its origins? Um, once again, guys, I'm going to have to refer back and forth to my notes every now and then, so if you see me looking down, deal with it. Everybody knows I'm not good at prep. I just do things on the fly. And so my life follows as such. Um, the Old Fashioned was developed in the 19th century. Um, it was given its name in the 1880s. So I didn't even have to look that time. In the 1880s. And was first described as a potent concoction of spirits, bitter, water, and sugar. Um, it was referred to at the time as a bittered sling. Which kind of sounds cool. Can I have a bittered sling, sir? I don't know. Sounds fancy to me. But, I'm me, so a lot of things sound fancy. Anywho, um, in 1882, uh, rye became your go-to for the old-fashioned. And like I said, rye drinks are usually what you use for, or go for that. Um, I have, however, at one time I was at a bar, and this place advertised how they had the best old-fashions. That's what they were all about. It's all old-fashioned. So I was like, oh, I kind of love an old-fashioned. So I go in, and I sit there, and I ask for an old-fashioned. And the uh, bartender goes, oh, would you like Jim Beam with that? Excuse me? Are you going to advertise that you make old-fashions and use Jim Beams? Get out of here! Anyways, whatever. Um... Uh, so the drink originated supposedly by the Pendennis Club. It's a gentleman club founded in 1881 in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, and it was, the res recipe was supposed to be made up by a bartender in uh, honor of Colonel James E. Pepper. And if y'all remember, that was the first video I posted was the James E. Pepper Rye, uh, 19 or 1871. Whichever one it was. Um, which is fantastic, right? Oh, uh, speaking of fantastic, do we still have that bottle out here? Or is it inside? Okay. I'll bring... Uh, my my friend's going to bring out a bottle. I want to just go and talk about this bottle. Um, we did the Bottle and Bonded, I believe, the old granddad, uh, a couple of videos ago. And I was at the liquor store. And I had to get some backup liquor because I know that I'm going to go through this by the end of the video. Uh, for the most part, in sharing. Um, and I ran across a Jim Beam bottled and bought. Oh, here it comes, right here. The Jim Beam bottled and bond, 100 proof. And I was a little nervous about this because straight Jim Beam is great for shots. And honestly, that's about it. Jim and Coke, I don't usually sip on it. Um, if y'all see this and you, you're able to. You're able to get it. Uh, it was under 20 bucks. Uh, 100 proof. Got a great taste. It's pretty smooth. Um, it's got a lingering bite to it, but uh, it ain't going to kill you, so try that. Um, so, guys, I talked a little about uh, the uh, old fashioned. I'm going to smoke a little bit of this, enjoy a little bit more of this, and we're going to go into a little bit of the history of the monkey shoulder when I get back. So, stick around. Says. What are you doing? It's my video. It's my whiskey. I'm going to do what I want. Damn it. Hello. You're back. I'm here. Uh, so, uh, I've smoked a cigar. And this has just gone fantastic with this cigar. I mean, I can't think of a better pairing. Um, you know, if you would have... Charlie, if you want to go and see some of these. So, I got... Um, this right here is the Leaf Madero. Uh, this is a Nika Port uh, Puro. Um, this is another Madero. These are all dark cigars. And um, if you were to make an old fashioned and have it with these cigars, it wouldn't be right. It just wouldn't taste. I mean, you, you can. Um, it's all preference, I suppose. Um, but the thing is, when you mix and pair, I've had plenty of my favorite cigars and I've drank my favorite whiskeys and just they've clashed. Um, this, however, right now, because, like I said, this is a kind of sweeter, uh, more mellow cigar, and an old-fashioned has got that kind of taste to it, has just blended beautifully. I should be famous for this, uh, and I'm not. 
So I'm going to drink about it. Beautiful! Alright guys, uh, so the pizza just got here. So, we're going to talk uh, 